you can take a blue and make it a retina burning fuchsia. Maybe you don't want to do that. But you can turn the color up and down just a little bit as you see here. Just to play with it just a little bit to fit your needs. When you get a color you like, click on add to favorites if you want to use it again. Puts it up here and you can just simply select it from the favorites at any point. I'm not going to use that. I think I'm going to pick something about like this color right here and choose OK. And there's my wall color, my floor color here. And I'm just going to grab a tile, any old tile. And my ceiling, the same thing I can change on my ceiling, but I'm going to leave it because you don't really see the ceiling in the design and you won't see much of it in this design anyways. Some designs, if you have a cathedral ceiling, you'll see a lot more of it. Units. Metric units, imperial inches, and imperial feet in inches. So pick your poison, whatever you like. And then we are now ready to go to our design and start designing. We've gone through all of our tabs. So we're going to come down and we're going to click OK. And if you come in here and do it one with has a file name already exists, like I just did, you're going to get this message. But you, I'm just going to click yes because I don't know what demo underscore three was. And... I know what it's going to be though. So here we go. We're on our design now. Now we're ready to design at any point here. In fact, our walls are already attached to the mouse. So all you got to do is figure out where you want to be, do a single click, and here we go. Here's our wall. The wall is going to start building. The wall is going to start building. Here we go. Wall is coming out here, so you just run it out there to where you want it with your mouse. I'm running out of room on my design, so I'm going to stop this wall by hitting escape on my keyboard. I'm going to come back here and delete it because we are doing a tutorial here. And I know you want to know a little bit more about what just happened. So if you come into your design and you don't have walls attached, you've clicked on something else so the walls aren't attached. To get back your wall feature, you come up here to Sketch. This is the icon here that we use for our walls. Click on that, click on the plan, wherever you want to start your walls, and start going. We have Construction Line as well. We also have U-Shape Room, L-Shape Room, and Rectangular Room. And we're just going to grab the U-Shape Room here. So we've got right side up U-Shaped Room, upside down U-Shaped Room, lefty and righty room here. And I'm just going to choose this guy here. You also notice we have A and B measurements, A and B measurements. So let's say I want to make this guy 140 inches on A and 96 inches on the B legs and just click OK. And here we go. Now, I actually don't want this one either, so I'm going to delete him as well. The default light, don't worry about him. He just kind of floats around until you get all your walls figured out. And then he'll center himself over your room. We're going to come back here to sketch and we're going to start our design here and in this design I want it to be a hundred and thirty inches this direction so I can come out here and I can scroll to 130 inches except for I ran out of room down here back down here to 130 129 and an eighth and a quarter and a half and five eighths and seven eighths ah there's my 130 oh but I wiggled my mouse and passed it okay so eventually you can get there the easy way to do it is you'll notice I have a cursor over here in my length box all I have to do I don't even have to take my mouse over there I'm gonna leave my mouse over here so it doesn't confuse anybody cursor is already there just hit backspace on your keypad. Hit backspace, and I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna move my cursor back over here just to make sure that you can see that window. 130 inches, and hit enter on the keyboard. There we go, 130. This guy's gonna be 120 inches long along this leg. You'll notice that I just typed this in where it says length. I didn't I didn't do anything with my mouse. I just typed. Type in 120 inches, enter on your keyboard. You'll notice that, again, my wall has a 90 degree angle on it, a little 4 inch wall. I'm ready to build the next one. 
My next one's going to be 60 inches, so I'm going to type 60 inches in there and enter. And that's all the walls I'm going to use in this design, but I'm going to add one more just to demonstrate how we can change the angle with these walls. So this next wall is going to be 48 inches long. Now I don't want a 90 degree angle this time. I want a different angle. So I'm going to hit tab on my keyboard, backspace twice, and I'm going to type in the dimension that I want. In this case, 135. I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard, and there's my 135 degree wall, 48 inches long. Now I could keep going if I wanted to. Um, I can come back here and double click with my mouse, which will stop the wall, or I can hit escape on my keyboard, and I'm going to hit escape on my keyboard. So here we have it. Here's my design. You'll notice I'm a little bit off. There's there's wall down here that I can't see. So I'm going to come up here and use my zoom to fit button. This guy right here. And that pops it nicely into my design. See my default light has centered itself over the room. Now we're going to play with this little bit bitty wall here. This is a 48 incher. We're going to come in here and I'm going to choose my wall attributes. And you'll notice we've got a wall groups and a wall number. This is wall group number three. Um, and that's because I had three groups of walls already in this design. You saw them. The very first group I did as soon as we opened the design. Did it freehand there. The next group was from my U-shape um, kitchen template. And then this is my final group. So it's always going to show you the right group. And this is wall number four. You don't have to worry about catching the wrong wall. If you click on the wall, it's going to tell you what wall number it is. It's not going to get it confused with wall number one or wall number three. So I'm going to go to wall number four. And in this case, we're just going to run down through our list of options here. We're just going to hit them briefly because I do have a, a tutorial on walls that breaks down each one of these. So right now, we're just going to hit rotate. Rotate, and then we need to click on a point. And you've got down here in this corner, You've got a little, um, a little message that comes up when you're in a feature, and it tells you what you need to do. So left click on the wall corner to select it as a rotation center. So it's asking you to click on a corner to rotate from, or a pivot point. I'm going to choose the inside pivot point right here, and the reason I'm going to choose this inside pivot point is because I set this wall at 60 inches. I want it to stay 60 inches. If I choose this outside pivot point, it's going to add this dimension right here from the difference between these two. So I'm going to end up with a longer wall than 60 inches. So I'm going to click on the inside pivot point. Now as I move my mouse, my wall moves. When I get to where I want it, I don't know where I want it, right there. Just do a single left click and your wall places. Another left click brings in your placement zones. All right, wall number four. We can move it. Well, we can't really move this wall. Never mind. That's for single walls and end walls. OK. Resize. We can resize it. Simply click on the little blue button at the end of it. Drag it in and out. We can go back to wall number four. We can extrude. This is something you probably won't ever use on a wall, but you might. I've used it in a time or two. Add wall. Add a wall. If you watch my cursor here, you'll notice there's a little point right off the side of my cursor. And you can see the dimensions changing in the dimension line. Now, if you happen to know exactly where that is, look at the info panel over here. And you can type in the measurement there. Once you set it, then here's our next wall coming out. And there's our little T wall. I'm going to delete this guy. Come back in here. And add a construction line is the same thing as add a wall. It's going to work the same way, only it's adding a construction line. Now a construction line, I guess we haven't touched on exactly what that is. A construction line is basically an invisible wall. It's a wall that is in there for design purposes only. You cannot see it in any design, in any image except for in plan view. It won't show up in elevations. It won't show up in 3D. Um, it is simply there as a guidance tool for when you're designing. Um, continue wall. It's going to put it right back at the 90 degree. Shoot me a wall out here. Escape to end it. Grab this guy now. You can do add to group. It's already part of my group. I don't need to, but if I had another grouping of walls in here, I could add it to that group. And that would 
you know, like if I had a little set of bathroom walls up over here or something. Um, then we can remove from group, but I'm already in the group, so I don't need to. Delete, inside elevation and attributes. We're going to hit delete. And on this one, we're going to come down to inside elevation. We'll cover that later. Attributes. Here's the attributes of our wall. If you've designed your walls and you realize, oops, I need one of that, that's a construction line, there you go. In fact, we're just going to take a look at a construction line. Here's your construction line. Invisible wall, you see through it, but you notice there's measurements tied to it, and there's a placement zone. Perfect for aligning an island. Construction line number four, you'll notice this has changed from wall four to construction four. I'm going to go back to my wall attributes now change it back to a wall. I've got inside and outside placement zone. If you design in a clockwise manner, you will always have an inside placement zone. If you design counterclockwise, your placement zone will be outside. Our wall length, our wall thickness, and our wall height. All of these can be edited in here, so you can you know, change it if you need. And then our wall material. And these are set at default as black, black walls. The, the rest of them here are the NKB, uh, N, yeah, uh-huh. Getting KB is in, and uh, NKBA confused here. There's the NKBA um, standards for it. So you can, you know, set the NKBA standards for a brick wall if that's what you want. Most designers, I think, just leave it on default. And then we've got a texture tab, and we've got default and special. And if you choose special, you can come in here and select any of your textures. And that's going to change just this wall specifically. So if you've got four walls and you need four walls, each a different color, you can set a different color on each wall.